Hey, Paul. Hey, Fab. How you doing? I'm good. Yourself? Good. Good. All right. So I fear this show might become more of a therapy session for me, <laughs> or at least a business therapy, whatever, if that's a thing. Um, you you suggested we do a deep dive on you know the discovery call and that kind of create like uh, generated a an offline discussion between the two of us on terms of uh, it's it's most probably the part I struggle with the most I would say uh, and you were kind of arguing on the side that that's probably the most important in the sales process anyway um, and so. So explain, explain what you're saying offline about, you were saying that, you know, of course our shows ask the right questions. And, and I like what you said. You said, often when I focus on things I want to discover specific questions, it, uh, I think what you said, and I'll paraphrase and I'll let you explain it. You said, sometimes it kills, um, it kills the flow of the conversation. Yeah. So just a background, like obviously anybody who's been listening for a while knows that I'm a HubSpot consultant. I help them. I help clients optimize their their HubSpot accounts, all that in terms of helping them get better data, you know, revenue data and stuff like that. So they can have end up with concrete action items um, that they can target to improve their business. And that's like kind of the holy grail, you know, and, and stuff happens somewhere in between. Um, and so I know very well that the impact I bring to the business is much more than now I have a HubSpot account with a few new pipelines and some nice properties and maybe some sales playbooks. Like that's the tactical side of it. The impact at the end of the day is much broader. Um, so, you know, because because we've been talking, we've been doing the show, we know each other also outside of the show. Uh, I listen to a lot of salespeople. I've worked with a lot of sales leaders. You know, a lot of people, it's about asking the right questions and blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, well, at the end of the day, the real impact I can drive is a revenue impact, right? Like maybe not yeah. as directly as you because yeah. I'm going to build your process. I'm going to change your reps on methodology so they can sell more. It's more of an overarching revenue uh, impact, let's say. Um, so, so, I mean, and so the challenge I have, like you were, like were kind of saying, is that when I think about the questions I want to dive into, I mean, there are, there are a few, but like, you know, like the, the, the typical ones would be like, you know, what's kind of revenue, what are your revenue goals? Like what was preventing you from getting there and blah, blah, blah. Like these nice juicy questions, like let's say, let's put it that way. Um, I get distracted from having an organic conversation with the prospect because uh, I, you know, I am truly interested in what they're doing and and how can I help them? And I want to make because I'm by myself. I want to make sure that I'm working with clients that I actually enjoy working with and stuff like that. Um, yeah, when I have a focus on I need to I, I need answers to these questions, it becomes non organic. When I focus on the organic, I feel I end up uh, losing control of the conversation and having them kind of guide the conversation into what they want. And at the end of the day, what most people want is fairly basic, right? They want sales pipelines, they want email marketing templates, they want, uh, you know, lead scores, they want, you know, like they want stuff like tactics, so to speak. And they don't want deeper because they don't maybe realize that they can get deeper than that. Well, um, oh, here, yeah. here, so, okay, I understand what you're saying and it, it it's something... That I've heard before. I've heard people say, "Well, if I if I deep dive and I let the conversation go somewhere organically, often we get off track." Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, and it's it's not an easy thing to do, right? So let's say you establish someone. Okay, we're going to do a half hour discovery call. And what was the purpose of your discovery call? Like you said, often it's very tactical. It's like, hey, we want to we want to we want a, a specific uh, CRM. Uh, we want to be able to build a playbook. You know, there's some very specific things here. What I would suggest with you say, hey, look, before we get into this, obviously you want to make sure you're talking to the decision maker. But before we get into this, I'd like to understand a little bit more about your business so that I can understand how this is going to help your business. So, yes, it's going to move forward organically, but you're sort of setting up the conversation. You're saying to them, 
I want to find out more about you and what's important to you, but you're not asking them like to go in every which way you're saying specific to making your business grow. So in other words, you know, once you solve this CRM problem or this situation, what are you hoping to get out of this? One of my favorite starter questions that I have when I'm doing a discovery call is what are your expectations for this call? Right. Because a call specifically. Okay. Yeah. So, so whether it's a call or a meeting, you know, and let's say you, you've booked an hour and you said, so look, I know that we're going to obviously talk about your business and we're going to talk about what I can do to help, but I want to know what, what specifically are your expectations for the call? Yeah. Oh, I want to know this. And they might throw out some really tactical things for you. And then when, when we say, you know, when we say, well, how do you deep dive into that? Well, then it's about holding on to what that person said and going deeper, mm -hmm. and, you know, and I'm not talking to you specifically here. I'm talking to everyone because I know you know this, but it's a lot harder to do than it is to say. <laughs> and yeah. what it is, is that, you know, and, and the best way, and we've said this before too, the best way to do that is to practice it. Right. So yeah. if you're in front of someone and says, Hey, you know, we'll use your example because I, I like I like this. Uh, hey, you know, Fab, you know, our CRM can help us grow our business. Well, what do you, what are your growth numbers? And then, yeah. you know, then you'll find out. You know, like we were saying offline, if the company's trying to grow to 100 million and they're making 50 million, you know, and they're trying to cheap you out on on prices for for what they want to do, well, you need to say, hey, look, to get there, you need this tool, and to use this tool, you need to understand. So, but what you're trying to do is you're trying to understand from the client what their objectives are. Yeah. And, 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 and to do that, you need to pick something out when they're talking and ask another question that you think is relevant to the conversation. Mm -hmm. And that's a tough thing to do. And what I do with, and I haven't, we have, you and I have never done this on the show, but maybe we should at one point is I'll do literally a practice. I'll say with people, you're going to ask me three open-ended questions based on what I just said. So we'll talk about something in a fit call, like the first five minutes, right? And I'll tell you, I want to grow my business. I'll tell you, I want to leave it to my kids. I'll tell you, I want to make a hundred million. Then you got to choose your next question, but it should be based on my kids, my business or a hundred million, right? And yeah. You, so then you might say, hey. It's fine if I can interrupt you there. Yeah. In my experience, you know, those are nice hypothetical answers, but I've never had... A client tell me that right like five minutes into the conversation right i mean i've, I've really had a client tell me that you know like an hour and a half into the conversation to come into a couple conversations you know it's usually a lot around like well uh, you know i need uh, you know i need my reps to be able to like log their opportunities right okay uh, all right so let's I'm try to see if that, that yeah so, so let's say someone says i need my reps to log my their opportunities first of all is it the person you're talking to i hope is a decision maker of course they are right yeah okay so the point are, are they usually the owner the vp sales what are they usually or let's yeah, it's, it's usually oh. some yeah it's just usually somewhere between the a vp whether it's sales marketing or service depending on which group i'm talking to and the owner or, or the revenue owner or like the person that's in charge okay. of the way. So let, let's just say for this argument's sake that it's the owner or the revenue owner, like you said, the person who can, you know, write you the check. Yeah. Um, and if they say to you, I need my reps to log their opportunities, I think the next question for you needs, the first thing that needs to come out of your, your mouth, and they might say, well, it's obvious, say, why do you need them to log their opportunities? Because mm. then they're going to answer, well, because I need to know what they're doing. Okay. Why do you need to know what they're doing? Because if I know what they're doing, I can help them uh, or, or it'll help me figure out if they're doing the right thing. Okay, let's assume for a second that you figure that out and they are suddenly doing the right thing. What does that mean? What does doing the right thing enable you to do? So if, when, when I hear that from a VP sales, let's say I hear, well, I, wanna, I, want my sales to get, I want my sales reps to be better at what they do. Of course, we all know what that means, right? In, in your mind, you're like, of course, I want to get better. I want to sell more. But you need to ask them because you need to understand that specific path. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't understand that specific path, how they're seeing it in their mind, that's where it's harder to connect. And that's where you mm -hmm. you probably get into, I'm, I'm not saying you, one, one gets more into sales mode because they don't understand specific path. So let's take that a specific example. 
So I need my reps to log their calls or, or, or log, log their stuff more often. Let me pretend in this situation, if I say, okay, why do you need them to log more? Give me an answer. Um, uh, because right now, you know, the business is doing well, but, you know, we're just not sure what's happening, right? At the end of the day, at the end of the month or the quarter, I sit with my accountant and they tell me how much revenue I got and, and, and I don't know beforehand. So it's hard for me to anticipate what might happen. Okay, and this is a really important answer I'm going to give you here. And this is how I'd say it. Say, look, of course, I understand that. And I can assume what my reasons for that would be. But I need to understand more specifically, if you don't mind my asking, you understanding where the business is coming from. Once you have that, what does that enable you to do? Answer me again, please. Make it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, it allows us to understand... It allowed me to understand where my business set it. Like, do I need to hire more people? Do I need to um, let people go? Do I need to cut costs? Can I spend more? Uh, it's hard to foresee what's going to be happening if I'm just getting my d numbers from my accountant, uh, you know, three months after it happened. And let's assume you have those numbers. And, and <laughs> what are the... Let's say you have those numbers and you understand them. I, I, I just make sure I want to understand. I'm not sure how I would. What do you mean? Let them go. Like if, if, if they're making their sales numbers, aren't you going to want to keep them? Or are you think I, I don't mean the sales team, but like, our, or, or let's say our, our production team, right? Like if, if our numbers are, if our sales are down, like I, I can't, I can't hold on to the whole team. Uh, when my sales are up, then we can't deliver on projects. So it's hard for us or for me to decide you know, how we're going to, what, what staff we need to be able to support the sales that are coming in, but I can't foresee what the sales that will be, will be coming well, in. So you have the overall numbers, but you're not getting the, the specific stats. So it's hard for you to know where the business is coming from. And it, 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 it hurts you operationally. Is that what you're saying? Is that, is that my understanding? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's hard to, because I, I, I only get my numbers from my accountant you know, after the quarter is done, oh, okay. like, I, I, I'll see that, oh, we had a good quarter. And then, so then the challenge is that my production team is like screaming that they don't have enough staff and our projects are delayed and customers are, end up unhappy. Uh, and, and in the past, we've had the reverse situation where it's just like, okay, our production is really quiet. And then what we realize at the end of the quarter is that, well, the numbers were down. And so there was just not that many projects coming in. So they actually didn't have that much to do. And so we could have used that opportunity to maybe, you know, revamp our, our, our production process, you know, get, you know, get more production software. You know, like there's a lot of things yeah. that we could have done knowing that they weren't going to be that busy for, for a quarter. Okay. And I, I understand that. And let's assume you have that view. Let's assume it's there and you create efficiency. What could that mean? Does that mean better revenue for you? Does that, what could that mean if you had to translate that into dollars to make this up, of course? Like um, make a percentage up, whatever, whatever you What think. does it mean in, in terms of? Well, either dollars or percentage efficiency. Like what does it mean on the bottom line at the end of the year? I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure. Like basically. Well, let's say you're, like, you're let's say you're more organ, organized operationally. Right. And you have, yeah. you have this sort of, you know, this, this elastic effect. Right. Like operationally. I, I assume it's going to create efficiency. And you told yeah. me earlier that you're making $25 million a year. Well, does that increase your margins at the end of the year? Does it let you give you more gross revenue? What do you see this, you know, the long-term effect of this being like being more organized operationally? Mm, I see what you mean. Um, yeah, I, I believe it'll help us scale and, and grow our revenue uh, more more predictively because we can then calculate, we can then determine customer success. We can probably get more referrals. We can have a more uh, well well oiled team, so maybe uh, more efficient headcount, um, and maybe not as much because revenue is growing right now. Um, it's, it's, it's maybe not the revenue growth. I think that we're on track. Uh, it's, it's the profitability that would allow us to grow, you know, okay. go from recurring percentage, uh, up and without a increased profitability, you know, we can invest more and grow more. And in a real, in a real life situation, 
fab or whoever's listening, you want to, <laughs> you want to tie that into a real, a real number. So you want to say, well, what does that look like percentage wise? Because at this point they'll have said to you hundred million and they might say, well, that's an extra $10 million a year. Mm. So then that's a lot of money, $10 million, right? So I've had a client recently who told me he wants to go like from 30 million to hundred million in, in gross revenue. Well, if you tie back your investment and if the, if the only passage through requires better organization in their CRM, well, there's no other way, no matter how good their salespeople are, if they don't have a purview, they're never going to get there. So you might be a small part. You might be a, a small, you know, a small bolt in the engine or a spark plug, but if they don't have that spark plug, the engine doesn't run. And, and, yeah. and so that's why your, your question should always be, aimed at understanding what it means to them and what they attach value to them. Like I've had a few people said money is not important. I'm like, okay, I'm pulling my hair out. Well, most people, it's money and it's profitability and it's growing the company and it's scale. Yeah. But you, and need, I think, you need to ask them questions to focus there. Yeah. I think where then it goes back to the initial challenge that I brought up and I don't work, in the day to day with salespeople as much as you do, but you know, I do see salespeople's opportunities when I'm kind of working new sales pipelines and I'm working like data and, and I see this, it's like, it's, there's that challenge. And, and it, you know, I, I joked at the beginning that it was going to be a therapy session and maybe it should be, but there's that challenge when we start, um, it's like that, you know, when, when you meet somebody new, right? Like in a social event, right? Uh, you know, there's no, there's no agenda, right? There's no agenda to this conversation. We're just understanding, is this somebody I have a good fit with? If it is, maybe we can, we can develop a stronger relationship, go for, go for drinks or coffee and, and, and so on and so forth. Or maybe, you know what, they're, they're cool, but there's just, we have nothing in common. So that's it. Like there's no agenda per se. But when we start that conversation with a prospect, we we're both coming in with agendas, yeah. so to speak. Right? The prospect is like they they have a specific need, you know, yep. whatever that is, and whatever in, in their mind. If it's like their need is very superficial or is very, you know, I've had clients that like shared very deep uh, needs and stuff like that, and this is great because then it allows me to to build a proposal that makes sense for them. But I have clients that are like they they just want this, and they're very. Uh, the English word is missing me. They're very, very, they're very, uh, what's mifian? How do you say mifian in English? Oh, like they're, they're very, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, they're very guarded. Like they don't they're trust. They're, they're weary or leery. It's weary or leery. One of the, two. yeah, I think they're weary of consultants. You know, they, for them, it's a dollar amount. You know, they're like, I'm, how much money I'm going to have to spend hold, on hold this. On, I, I want to stop you right there. Yeah. Quick. Anyone who's weary of consultants or, or distrustful of consultants says, oh, you know, you consultants, you charge a fortune, nothing happens. You got to stop right there. If you're getting that feeling, you have to stop and address that. Even if it yeah. takes you an extra half hour or an extra hour, you need to address that. You need, you need, to, do, you need to go in that tangent. Yeah. So if someone's very stiff says, okay, you know, uh, fab or I'm using, using example again, you know, we need this CRM. We just want to do this, this, that, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to go beyond in the business. Uh, I just want to do this. I would say to them, Hey, listen, of course I can do that for you. I'm telling you now. And, and, you know, I think I can fit it within your budget. That's good. But I really want to understand your business needs because if I don't, I, you know, to me, it, it I can't be your real partner. Then I'm just a supplier. Mm -hmm. Well, mine being a supplier, but I'd rather be your partner. Oh, I don't trust consultants. You know, you guys all screw it and say, and then you need to go, Hey, hold on a second. Um, can you tell me what happened with you with the consultants? You need to dig there. You need to be the therapist with them for consultants. <laughs> you need to ask them, why don't you trust consultants? Well, yeah. I had a bad experience. Tell me more about it. I yeah. I, and I'm not saying like they flat out told me they don't trust. I've had one prospect that once told me they didn't trust consultants because they had a bad experience in the past and, and they ended up not working. They, they wanted somebody full time. Um, but it's, it's just like, all I, I guess what I'm trying to say, like, if I go back to my, my initial point, it was like, we're, we're both coming into this conversation with our agenda, right? I want to know yeah. uh, if, if, if this is a good fit. Is this a good client for me? Is this somebody I can work with? Um, they, 
had their own thing. They they want their CRM, they want their marketing tool, you know, they want whatever whatever it is. Like I said, some have a deep understanding of why they need this, some don't. Um, and and so then there's that as opposed to a social situation where there is no agenda, theoretically, um, there is one. And that's where I find like things break down a bit is that we're kind of there or I'm there as, as a salesperson and I'm like, oh, I, I need to understand what their business is. So I need to start off the conversation, you know, with something like, what are you expecting from this call? And they're already six, six steps ahead. Like I need the CRM with this type of pipeline. I need that. I need my sales reps to have uh, blah, blah, blah. And I need it all done by next Tuesday. Can you do that? And I'm like still in, oh, wait, so, so wait, what was your expectation for yeah. this call? And, and, you know, obviously I'm being, I'm being funny here, but um, yeah, that's, that's where the situation I feel falls apart is like, and I understand what you're saying, like, and you've said this in multiple times. So, you know, that's how, that's why role plays are important. That's why, you know, coaching your sales team, that's why, uh, you know, like HubSpot has their uh, playlist function where you can like, get people to listen into great, in our case, discovery calls and things like that. That's, you know, you're, you're never going to get that much as much from like a podcast episode. Uh, there's, there's more to do than that. Um, but what I find is that's where things tend to break down. It's like, we both come in with our agenda, depending on the other person's personality, we either have a good fit or, or we don't. And uh, if it's a good fit, great. We have a great conversation. If it's not a bad fit, things break down. And again, I'm just myself. So at the end of the day, if it breaks down, I have a full pipeline. Like, and I, I don't need a big pipeline. I have a full pipeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if something doesn't work out, it's, it sucks because some, some projects could have been interesting. But I could see for a sales rep who's like, they have aggressive targets to achieve. And you know, then you go into a solution, right? You just sell your solution. Boom, it serves this. You know, production is on not on my problem. So I'm going to deliver you, it to somebody you know, that's else. That's where you need to have sort of a, you need to have uh, your meter, your qualification meter. And yeah. that, comes, that comes with time, right? So if someone calls me up, I'll give you an example. Someone calls me up, say, hey, Paul, we just want you to come in and train and do this and do that for a couple of days. And I ask them questions, say, hey, you know, we have this amount of budget. We just want you to do it. Well, I look at it, I say, okay, is the budget worth it? Is it something that I can do? Yeah, okay. So I might not discover the motivation. I, like I, I did it recently. I did a contract. I went in and I did two days of training. You know, I didn't discover the motivation of the owner. I was dealing with one of the VPs and we did it. It was fine. Um, and we gave them some value. I, I didn't necessarily get to understand the crux of everything was going on, but it worked. But mm. one thing I want to say to you is you always know your agenda. But really in a discovery call, I think the real thing that you're trying to do is discover the reason behind their agenda and if you can meet their needs. Because ultimately, if that client that you know will we'll take that funny situation and saying, they know, hey, you know, Fab, uh, forget why we're doing this. We need this, 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 that. You know, can you deliver it? We're, we're willing to do that. And you hear them and they say, okay, we want a, you know, we want a, I'm, I'm just going to make numbers up here. We want a one month contract. We're willing to pay you a uh, uh, hundred thousand dollars. And you say, yeah, that works within my thing. It's going to take me so, so I'll just do it. You might just say, yes. Okay. Well, all right. When do we start? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and, and, and those things happen and that's a quick qualification because the guy seems like a nice guy. He's really in a rush. He's done his research. Uh, he knows exactly what he wants. You you can deliver it. That's fine. It's kind of like when you walk into the bicycle store and you say, hey, I want the specialized bike with the Shimano 105 and these clip-in pedals and this and that. And that you haven't stocked. Yes, I do. Okay. Bye. See you later. Thank you very much. You know, have a great day. That's okay. Yeah. You don't always have to do the deep dive. Well, why are you going to ride the bicycle? Hey, fuck you. I just want to go ride it. <laughs> um, but in another term, most clients walk in and they, and, and you know, if we use a bicycle analogy, they don't know which bike they want. Well, what do you, what kind of cycling do you do? Yeah. Oh, you know, I do a lot no, of, I, you know, I, I, I like, I really like what you just said there because it's like, you're right. And, and I remember the, there's, there's a marketer that I, that I follow and that I interact with on, on LinkedIn regularly. And, you know, he, he hates this discovery questions because he's like, I've been a marketing leader for, I, I don't know how many years, let's say, let's call it 20 years. I've bought C it was, he wasn't talking about CRM software. I forget what it was, but I bought CRM software in the past. I know what all the CRMs do. I know what I need. And it's like the last thing I can stand is a salesperson trying to yeah. understand my deeper yeah. motivations. Yeah. And 
And you're right. I really like what you said that at the end of the day, if, if I can help them, you know, if they have a very clear need and their budget and their timelines make sense and I feel that I can, I can contribute, like, why not just do that? Right. And if, if my price point is X and they're willing to pay X uh, or, or we can negotiate to something that makes sense for both of us, like, why not? Like, we don't need to that. And I, we don't need to approach the discovery call with an absolute, you know, deep you're, understanding. You're you're, what you're doing is you're approaching the discovery call with openness. So if the person yeah. always says, hey, Fab, I know what I need. I need this, 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 that. You say, okay, fine. If, so what, you, you might even confirm. So George, you're telling me, or Georgette, you're telling me you need this, 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 this. Yeah, exactly. I use, I like using terrible names. Georgette, you're telling me you need this, 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 that. Yeah, I do. That's exactly it. Okay, so then let's move forward. Because they basically, they've, they don't want to reveal their inner selves to you. They're, they're not feeling insecure. They're not worried. They know what they want. Fuck, okay, sell it to them. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, and but you then, so that's, you, up, you know? That's great. I think in some cases, though, um, and, and maybe that's how, if, if, you know, maybe one solution is for, you know, in this case, I know we're talking a lot about me, but, you know, if we extrapolate to a business, like maybe there's a way, maybe it needs to be reviewed how you sell your products or your services. But, you know, if you're, if you're finding that, and this is more of a question for you, but if you're finding that a lot of clients don't know what they want, like they haven't, they're not like the example I gave, like he's been buying this software for 20 years. Like he knows exactly what he, he needs or your example of the bike guy who he knows exactly which parts he needs. Um, you know, if your clients are not like that and you know, they're, they're maybe a bit defensive. It's a harder to dive a little deeper. Maybe they don't really understand. Maybe they're right, not the right decision maker. Maybe, you know, there's a lot of maybes. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe selling some sort of a discovery session, you know, like an exploratory session, an evaluation, an assessment. Like, I know, I know you do like some evaluations of sales. Team. Like that could potentially, I'm wondering if that could potentially be, maybe there's something, there's something wrong in, in terms of how you're trying to sell if that situation arises a lot. I don't know what you think of that. Uh, that's interesting. If the, if the situation, if it arises a lot that the people don't know what they need, it could be the nature of your product. Like the nature of my product is often people don't know what they need. Mm -hmm. the, the nature of my service, they, they don't know. But in certain situations, people do know what they need. Then your discovery yeah. has to be about understanding how exactly you're going to fit your product or your service to what they need. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I agree with you in certain cases, depending on what kind of decision, the higher up you're speaking to in the company, usually uh, the owners or the VPs or the decision maker on a service uh, and, and, and you're a service, but you're also a product, right? So when we're talking yeah. about, so it's a mix of both in, in a case where it's just a service, often that service is coming to as, as a consulting. So if you're consulting with someone, often they don't know exactly what they need and that's why they're talking to you. So yeah. in, my, in my situation, discovery call, it's very rarely do I get someone who knows exactly what they want, except when I spoke to, like you said, a few months ago to an ex colleague who was a VP sales and she knew exactly what she needed. Yeah. But that doesn't happen to me very often. Right. But in your case, it might happen a little bit more often because they know CRMs. And, they, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, a lot of people know CRM, so they're looking at it from a product perspective, which is fine. But if you're talking to someone higher up who is really trying to solve an issue rather than get a product, well, then there, there's a different conversation. So, yeah, so, I find where, so, where my challenge lies, and I don't know if it extrapolates to a lot of other people, is like, you're right, like, I do, I tend to have two types of prospects that I speak to. The prospect that knows exactly what they want. You know, and that might be still very high level and, and there's potentially some, some need to dive a little deeper as to why, why do you need, you know, to log your opportunities and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, they kind of know what they want. They have a, they don't, they don't want somebody to help them discover what they want. They just want somebody who knows, in my case, HubSpot to help them influence it so they could do what they need to do. But then, the, then I have the completely 180 version of that, which is like, they don't know what they need. They need, they know they need to do something different. Um... But it's either like their systems are complex. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why they don't know. But that, um, that, that, that is the exact place where you're going to have that discovery call. Right. Right. And, and let's take the bicycle analogy again. So 
you know, let's say you've got both extremes. You've got the person doesn't have know their ass from their elbow and they walk into the bike store. You need to ask them a lot of questions. And then you, you have the other person who knows exactly what they want. So the good bicycle owner, you know, I, I, and, and, and I'll give you an example here. The good bicycle store owner, if I walk in, I say, okay, I, I'm looking for uh, this exact part, blah, 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 blah. And he says, okay, I can get it for you. Hey, can I ask you why you need that? I need it to do this, 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 that. Can I challenge you on that? Because I've seen a lot with certain clients that they're, they're better off using this bike part instead of that bike part. Well, mm -hmm. you're still doing a discovery there, even if, and, and you're going to challenge them if you feel they're doing, I'll give you an example. You, someone walks in and you say, hey, we're using Salesforce. We think it's great, blah, blah. We just want to do is you're like, we just want to use a marketing hub from uh, HubSpot and we just want to go Salesforce. You might have a conversation with them, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have the other person at the other extreme, which is, they need a full discovery call because they don't even know why they're riding a bicycle. They just say, well, I, I moved to this new city and it's, you know, cars aren't allowed to go anywhere. I want to buy a bike. Okay. What are you going to do with your bike? I commute. Uh, I guess I'm going to ride with my kids on the weekend. Okay. Then, and some people say, well, what do you want to invest? You know, cause some people want to put a lot more money towards these things. Cause I want a bike that's going to last me for a long time or I'm just here for six months. So that warrants a big discovery call. Whereas this one warrants maybe some tweaking depending on what they're looking for. Mm. But that's where your qualification meter, your internal qualification meter is going to say, okay, is, is this even worth it? So the person who walks into the fab store and says, hey, I want you to redo my whole CRM stuff. I've got 500 bucks and I want you to spend three months on it. You're going to be, you know, <laughs> your little red light's going to go on and say, uh, yeah, no, that can't happen. You know, $500 for three months, uh, just isn't the right budget, you know? And then, you, then what you might do if you're, if you're, you know, fabs in a, in a rock and roll mood, you might say, can I ask you how you establish your $500 budget? Or can I ask you how you establish your $10,000 budget? Can I ask you like, what is it? Well, that's what we spent 10 years ago when we hired George to uh, put in Salesforce. Okay. Um, you know, what are you expecting to get for it? So you always need to have your, you always have to be, I think to, to do a good discovery call, you always need to be able to sit in your prospect's shoes. And what do I mean by that? You, when you're asking questions, you always have to tell yourself, why are they here? Not, and when you said my agenda, it always worries me a little bit. Your agenda should be pushed to the side a little bit. It should always be, why are they here? I, I'm devoting... I booked a half an hour or an hour with them because I've done a pre-qualification and I feel there might be something here, but for that hour, it's all about them and you need to understand yeah. what's going on. But that, that goes back to then what we were saying at the beginning, when I say my agenda, my agenda was like, as a salesperson is like those deeper questions. Right. And, and that's why, but I'm starting to realize why th that leads to unorganic, whatever, there's probably a better word for it. Inorganic, inorganic, yeah, inorganic. inorganic uh, conversations. Because you're right, it is about the prospect. But then the challenge, then for the salesperson in this case, myself, um, is that yes, it's about them. But we got to make sure that I can adapt myself to them, so that at the end of the day, when our call is done, that half hour is done, that hour is done, I know what my next steps are. Maybe I need another call. Maybe I have enough to build a proposal. You know build enough to do a demo, you know, whatever my, my, pro, my, my process looks like. Um, but let so, me throw a wrench in that. Let me throw a wrench in that fab. Let's say you're having a very organic conversation and the conversation brings you to a bit of a strange, different place. You end up finding out that you work together at some past company and this person's, you know, telling you about this wonderful person they met. They ended up getting married with her and you know, now they live, you know, like it really goes off on a tangent, right? Yeah. But the beginning of the conversation was all about the business. Mm -hmm. And you might say to yourself, oh my God, I'm wasting my time. But no, you're not. Because mm -hmm. you're finding out, one, you're finding out more about the person. This is something they want to share. It's important to them. So listen to them. And then after that, say, hey, wow, I'm really happy about you. That's wonderful. But just to come back to what we were saying earlier, how do you feel that, you know, your, your CRM is, is not working, you know, or, or you might even say, you might even confirm something. Oh yeah. I remember your wife. She's cool. I did some work with her at one point and, you know, we're really good buddies and uh, she's a great lady. And I think I remember her telling me that she was 
going to marry you. That's so funny that it's you. You know, that's really, really interesting. So you add something to it and then you come back to subject Then you say, hey, remember, we're, uh, you know, don't, don't say remember. So, so um, in this process that you're doing in your sales process, tell me why you're worried about it. So, so now you added something to their conversation. You didn't just change a conversation. I'm not sure where I heard this recently, but I love that. I do this naturally because I'm interested. So if you tell me, hey, Jen's, uh, you know, your wife does uh, mechanical engineering. And, uh, you know, she builds all these bridges. I'm interested. I say, oh, that's really cool. I, she must like doing mechanical engineering, you know, and building all these bridges. And you might say, yeah, she really does. And then once you've answered me, I can bring back the subject because I've, I've, I've acknowledged what you're talking to me about. Yeah. And that's what's important. So even if you go off on a tangent, it's obviously important for you to tell me that your wife does mechanical engineering. You know, mm. so that's awesome. So, hey, man, she's a mechanical engineer. I, I didn't just veer off and say something else. I, I confirmed something about it. But that comes from my natural curiosity. I'm, I'm, and I rather spend an extra 10 minutes personally, an extra 15 minutes off on a tangent that I know is important to you than try to bring you back. But I will ask you questions on it, but I will bring you back. But I won't say I'm bringing you back. I'm going to mention something because I'm truly interested. So, yeah. so even when it is truly organic and it goes off topic a little bit, if you're building a rapport with this person and they're the decision maker, that's amazing. I mean, my guitar, you, I, I can't tell you how many times, I'm sure your drums is the same thing. My guitar has asked, so many people have said to me, totally off the blue, like I'm having a discovery call with them. Hey, Paul, do you play guitar? And then I talk to them for at least two, three minutes, but you, you've been subject to me talking about this too, about my passion for music. <laughs> And all that and it's fun and then the next thing i say you know then they might say hey by the way when can you start and then or i'll say you know i could do this or can do that the, the, the I, I think very we're i think people are too concerned about really keeping it on track and about the business it's okay to veer off a little bit because mm. we are human beings and, mm. and that's the nature of being a human being. yeah i think it's also yeah, you know, it's okay to not, how should I put this? It's okay to not uh, like listen to your customer in terms of like, uh, you know, cause usually at the end of your discovery call, you know, in their book, you know, it might've spent 45 minutes out of the hour talking about like personal stuff. You know, I, I have been asked about drums and, you know, things go, you know, especially if they're old colleagues or we used to work together in another place or, or, oh yeah, they know Paul or, you know, like sometimes it's, it's really easy to be your quote unquote off course. And then at the end of that, they're like, okay, well, you know, can you send me a proposal for next week? And, you know, the, the answer to that may be, you know what, we spend a lot of time talking about really interesting things, but I need more to be able to build a better proposal. So uh, I'm going to need to sit with you again and let's talk about other things. And I think, yeah, that's, but, but I think that's a lot insane. of people have a hard time but, and, saying and that. So that's, that's interesting you say that because... My suggestion there, like if you've had a really good conversation with someone for whatever the time is and, and they say to you, um, you know, you say, oh, great. And they say, oh, hey, my time's run out. And, and then you say, but hey, you know, George, um, you know, great conversation. I'm really happy. Now there's some other specific things that I really need to find out from you. When could we uh, schedule that? And if it's very specific and, and tactical and technical, just say, hey, it'll take 15 minutes and I've got 25 questions that I need to go through. You know, yeah. that's fine. You know, and then you ask your questions, boom, boom, because you had that relationship thing. You know what I mean? So you've built the relationship. You understand where they're going from. You understand what this person's about. Now it's going to be very specific questions and that's okay. You know, how many people on your team? What are you trying to do? Uh, what are the other softwares? Uh, what are you trying to connect with? Why is it you're trying to do this? When do you need to do this by, um, you know, how many hours a week can you devote to this? How many hours a week can your team? So all those very specific questions, they don't have to, they don't have to happen at the beginning of discovery. They can just be sort of at the end of the discovery and they're more um, technical questions that you need to answer. Yeah. It's okay. Just say, Hey, I've got 25 technical questions. And he might say, Hey, send them to me by email and I'll send it back to you uh, by things. Say, okay. And uh, you know, whatever. And then you might even do that, you know, and, and fill up a, a questionnaire. Yeah, I like that too, because that's, um, cause yeah, sometimes there are technical questions that are like a little awkward or difficult to add into a conversation, um, you know, like, and, and 
to, to you know, it's hard to well to to maybe bring into a conversation like, hey, great, like how many salespeople do you have, and like you know, like do they have specific targets, you know, like it just sometimes you know sticks out like a sore thumb, like asking those questions all of a sudden. So yeah, uh, there may be some yeah. or you know, like do you have a dev team or do you have you know, there's maybe some things that are just not as easy. They might happen organically and they might be, but instead with some clients, it might be more difficult, right? Uh, to wheel that in, to bring that into the conversation. So I, I, I like I your idea. Totally agree. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. It's sometimes it's like, oh, this just doesn't fit organically, but you need to ask the questions. I'm What I've done, I'm very comfortable in saying, hey, look, I've got some technical questions I need to ask you just to, to follow through. You know, I'm, I, do you mind? I'm going to pull up my Excel sheet and we'll go through them. But that happens after I've done my my organic yeah. uh, discovery call. I'm, I'm not going to try to fit it in there. Hey, by the way, how many reps do you have? No, no. It's like, that'll happen either way at the beginning. Like if, if they're, cause sometimes like I just had a discovery call this week where the person I, I said to them, look, just so I understand your reality, can you tell me about the different offices? And I was asking her very specific questions. Um, but in my first call with her, I was asking her what she was trying to achieve. So I did go really to this, the specifics but only after I understood her motivation. For me, that was important. But right. again, the motivation is like the bike store person. You need to know right up front. The person who walks in and knows exactly what they want, you might get to those technical questions really fast, and that's okay, and you're going to qualify. Yeah. Qualifying. And the other person, yeah. you need to understand why, and then you're going to find out, hey, so look, just so I tell you, George, I know now we've discovered that you, know, you need some, a road bike because you're traveling 20 kilometers to work every day. But now, you know, honestly, George, I can sell you a thousand dollar bike or I can sell you a twenty thousand dollar bike, hmm. um, you know, and then George said, well, what's the difference? Well, the twenty thousand dollar bike is going to be about, you know, three pounds lighter and you're going to be that much faster. And it's super cool. It goes super fast. And it's the at the cutting edge of technology. And the thousand dollar bike weighs, you know, three, four pounds more. It's super solid. It'll get you there. But, you know, it'll probably uh, take 10 or 15 percent off of your uh, time. What's more important? Hey, man, I don't like to bike fast anyways. I'm just going to go for the thousand dollar bike. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah. that becomes really technical after you've had th that, that conversation, in, in my opinion. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes it can happen at the front end, but less commonly. Right. All right, Paul. This has been good. <laughs> um it's a good 42 minute conversation. Yeah. Uh, this is interesting. I, I hope there's value. I mean, I know there's value for me. I hope there's value for salespeople. I think there's, I hope there's value for sales leaders. I think ultimately at the end of the day, the sales leader who are setting up their sales processes and choosing or building their own sales methodology, um, the discovery is the most important and, and discovery sessions that don't go well or where you're leaving money on the table at the end of the day, because you need to negotiate a discount are the ones where, a discovery didn't happen as well. Like the, the discovery didn't happen that well, I should say. Um, so I hope this was helpful to a lot of different people. I mean, I do have some operational takeaways that, that I'll share uh, in the notes, but I mean, I think, you know, we've talked a lot about playbooks and stuff like that. I think they're becoming handy. Um, I like your qualification meter. You know, if you can make it user-friendly for your rep to to build that, or if there's some automation stuff that you can do, that that's really interesting. Uh, and I like your list, quote unquote, of technical questions. I think that's yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's a good one. And I think there's a way of of nicely operating that, operationalizing that within HubSpot, whether it's like even a form that you can send the person, like, hey, here, just if you can fill this out, uh, that'd be super appreciated. And then that information just gets fit into HubSpot, and and life is good. Uh, or your rep can just ask the questions, right? Like if, if it makes sense. Yeah, I want to give a warning, though. What happens often when people have a list of technical questions is a lot of people stop listening <laughs> to the organic discovery call because they just want to get to their technical questions. So, yeah, that's why I like the idea that it's OK to have that technical question even be sent later. Right. Like after the call so that your rep can focus really on on the call that, that they're having and yeah. being in that moment. I think you mentioned that either at the beginning yeah. of our call or offline, but really being in the moment with that call and allowing it to go where it needs to go. And if you spend 90% of that call talking about how you both went to the same college 35 years ago, uh, that's okay, right? Like as long as, as you end up with the material you want, if, if that ends up being separate, uh, that's, that's okay. Or having yeah. a second call, you know, whatever yeah. works for you, obviously. 
Yeah, and, and the last the last thing I'd say is I'm reading a really good book by Rick Rubin. I forget the name of it, uh, but it's his new book, uh, something about creativity, uh, oh, yeah. act and whatever. And in there, he says, you know, when you're really listening in a conversation, you're never thinking about your next question. You're never thinking about how you're going to rebuke. You're totally in the moment and you're actually absorbing and listening. And I think mm -hmm. that's a great lesson for any salesperson selling anything when you're listening, you should be totally in listen mode. And I think you need to start there no matter what your, your agenda is down the line. And if you really listen right from the start, you can later say, you know, I, I understand these different things, but now I have some things that I need to ask you to make sure that I can propose the right thing. And that's where you're, that's where you can pick up and throw in your tactical questions. Mm -hmm. um, but discovery, yeah. discovery really has two parts. It has, the part where you're discovering what's important to them. And then internally you're discovering, well, your qual your, your qualification meter is saying, can I help these people? Or yeah. is it just going to be some dude I'm going to go, you know, fishing with because <laughs> he's a cool guy, you know, but really I can't sell him anything. And that can happen too. I mean, I've become friends with people I didn't sell to uh, because we can share things and it, it's interesting. Um, and there's value there and they, you know, uh, they'll send me references and, and, you know, they'll, they'll help me with my business, but I don't just do it for that. Just they're interesting people. And we learn from each other, you know, that's kind of how yeah. you and I met actually at first, it's not like we're selling each other, and, but we said, Hey, we can help. And th the podcast came of that. So, so there's yeah. value in all these things. Anyways, I'm going off a tangent there. Bring you back. <laughs> no, but that, that, that's a, that's a good one. I think, you know, the challenge is also like, you know, some, some prospects just don't talk as much. So then it's hard to be in listen mode um yeah and to me you know you know the reality is like when, when you're in the can wild I, can I interrupt you there yeah i love people who don't talk that much because with a good open-ended question that's where your your open-ended question should be really broad so someone who's yeah. not talkative and i'll give you a very specific example the guy who fixes my guitars he's a luthier he's he was at first the least talkative human being on earth so what i would say to him and i say i'd say hey his name's chester i say hey chester how'd you get into this business I tell you, he started talking <laughs> because, yeah. you know, he explained to me what was important to them. So with someone who's less talkative and less verbal, ask very generic open-ended questions that will make them, of course, related to what you're talking about. So if you're going in there and you're talking to a client and say, hey, what's important to you in your business? You know, don't be too specific. Mm. And anyways, Sorry, back to what you were saying. Continue your summary, and I'll I will not. No, 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 that, that was good because that's that happens a lot. I mean, you know, obviously at the end of the day, it's it's practice. I don't think you know, like uh, if I go back to myself, obviously, like I'm by myself. I don't have a massive pipeline. I don't do sixteen discovery calls a week, right? I do you know a handful a month at best. Um, you know, so it is a practice thing as well, obviously, uh, but. I would also say, though, it's okay to, to, as a business leader, as a sales leader, sorry, to then go back and look at your discovery calls. And there's maybe trends on how you as a business can better help your clients. I think that's that's some something there, too. There's, there's something yeah. to be said to that, too, where, wait a minute, like, we, we tend to encounter XYZ problem during discovery calls. What's going on here? Is it a, is it a sales training thing? Is it maybe a product question, a product thing? You know, like you, as a sales leader, you need to spend time on those transcripts, on those call recordings to understand what's going on uh, in there. Because there, there's some probably maybe there's some bigger insights than just ah, my salespeople aren't that great. Uh, at, at, oh, uh, ab absolutely. And, and I think all of this, I, I think what we're talking about in discovery call is also something you can use with your salespeople as a sales leader to make sure you understand what they're trying to achieve. And that's yeah. something we forget that. I read this great book many years ago, which I think I'm going to read, read again, the Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And mm -hmm. in that book, what the thing that marked me the most is about really treating everyone the same way. So whether you're trying to sell something to someone, you owe them the respect of understanding who they are, or whether right. you're talking to your kid, you owe them the respect of understanding who they are. Because right. if you don't take the time to know who these people are, you're just bullying through life and imposing your way on other people. Right. Um, so, I mean, it's getting a little philosophical here, but to me, the discovery is, you know, that's where that all happens. That's where gotcha. you're establishing these things. Hey, maybe we should do a role play in, in one of our next ones. Sounds You'll be good. there and I'll be the, uh, I'll be the victim. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, Paul. This has been thanks, good. Bye. Really yeah, good. Sure. Really interesting. Yeah. Um, thanks for your thanks for all this. And let's, thank you. Uh, let's chat next week. Let's chat next <laughs> week. See you, everyone. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.